Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X.E.L.O. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you for coming back. But if you are new here, do me a favor and like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll let you know when I drop another video. Today, what I want to do is actually go over this MK3 by Atoria. This is the Key Lab 49. I have it in white. Uh, so let's kind of get into it. I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you some other DAWs as well that it kind of works with and show you how to set them up. Let's go. All right. So here we are in FL Studio. I'm going to start with FL Studio because I think it was the easiest one for me to set everything up in. So as you can see, the keyboard is lit up. Uh, it's telling me that I have the sampler on there. But if you didn't have any of this set up, I want to show you what you have to do. Right. So what you want to do is go to programs over here. You hit that program button and it's going to take you to the DAW program. Right. And you can actually do a long press on it and it'll go to the DAW programming and then you have option for settings. So you can go to the global, click on that and you want to scroll down and you're going to see this one that says DAW protocol. And basically you click on the button and now you get an option to see what you uh, what they actually have inside there. So they have a HUI, they have an MCU, they have Reason in here, Studio One, Reaper, Pro Tools, Bitwig, and FL Studio, Cubase, and Logic Pro. And here's Ableton Live, and Live is the last one that's on the list. But let's go to the FL Studio one. I'm gonna click in the button. All right, so now it's locked to the FL Studio. You also have an option for sleep mode if you wanna kinda change the way the thing sleeps. Uh, has the welcome page. You can turn that off if you want to as well. But yeah, so basically that's all you would really need. And now the keyboard is set up for FL Studio. So you can go back to programs, click on the DAW, and now you're inside of the FL Studio setup for the keyboard itself, right? And if you're not seeing it, so you want to, if you're not seeing it inside the DAW, what you want to do is go up to your options, go to MIDI settings, and you wanna make sure the KeyLab 49 MIDI is on. This is one you're gonna use just for a generic controller. So basically that'll allow you to play on the keyboard, right? So you'll hear the sounds from the keyboard. And this other one down here that says DAW is the one you wanna make sure you have the KeyLab MK3 set up in here. So you click on it and you wanna to go to controller type. And then you wanna look for the KeyLab MK3, right? And once you have that, then you'll be able to use your tap tempo, your transport buttons, your metronome, all this in the loops, all that stuff will actually work. You'll get an option to actually save. You can do your quantize and undo and redo buttons are up here as well. So this will give you an option to set all that up really easy uh, inside the DAW, right? So I'm gonna close out this. So let's see if we can add some instruments. So I'm gonna start with some FL keys. Right, and let's do um, flex. Those are usually pretty easy to kind of get going and set up. And I also want to do a uh, FPC. So this basically this is like the drum program for FL Studio if you're not aware, right? Right, so you are able to see the FPC on the little screen here, and you're able to play with the pads, right? You can also play on a keyboard. Right, but you're always, you're missing that row, that, that, that last row of actual pads. So if I wanna play the keys, I can. And if I wanted to do some chords, I can click on chords, right? And if I wanted to bring up the chord screen, or if I wanted to create a chord, so like, let's say I wanted to do uh, a chord like this. Right, so now I created a custom chord inside here. Really dope. So if I go to the chords, so now I have uh, the chord set up on here. 
And what's really cool is that they actually gave you an option to do a strum in here. So you can actually do a strum straight from here. You can figure out which way you want them to go. If you want them to go up or down, they have a voicing option on here as well. So if you want to do voicing, so if I hit the key, so it's adding that voicing note on there, right? So if I go here and I go to a bass one, right? So now you can see there's a bass note that it added on there. Not only do they do that, now you actually have an option to do scales. So if I wanted to put it on a scale, I just hold down that scale mode. So now we're in the scale mode and the scale mode is actually on. And right now it's set to a C sharp. Right, and it's still playing the, the, the chord that I made, but now it's just putting it in scale. And it's adding that last note on there as well because we added it to the chords. Really, really dope um, options that you have here. And then on top of that, you have an option to do an ARP. So if I hit on the ARP, hold that down, and now my ARP is on and I can change the swing. I can change the beats per minute. Right, and you can change the uh, the mode of it to do random if you wanted to. You can go up or down, let's put it on up. Right, and you can always add an octave to it. So if, let's say you can go up an octave. Right, so you have those options right here on the keyboard and it's giving you uh, plenty of ways to make and create really quickly using this just a keyboard, right? So I think that part of it is really, really cool. So let's say now that we want to get to our uh, our instruments. So we can go to program, let's go to DAW, and now we're in the, M the FL keys, right? Go to the plugin. I can get an option to go to the plugin itself. So now I'm in the plugin and I can click on here. And now I have an option to move the selection of the end of the keys. I'm going to take off the ARP, right? And I'm going to go to the right and it's going to change the sound of the FL keys, right? Right, so they have a couple of different ones in here. Right, so that makes it really easy to kind of switch it up if you need to. You can use your knob and as of right now, I can go to FPC, I can go to flex. So now I'm on flex, right? So if I push the button in for flex, now, as you see, it'll pull flex up on the screen itself. And I can actually change the sounds using these arrows. So if I wanted to go up. Right, and that's not where it stops. So you can actually control, like say these faders, as you can see the faders moving. If I move this fader. So that's really dope that you can kind of control a couple of things with the keyboard itself without actually touching the mouse and using that inside the DAW. I think that part of it is really, really cool. And it should definitely help you out if you're trying to look for a keyboard like this. Um, if you are looking for any kind of equipment, I do have a link below in the description of this video that will take you to Zounds, and Zounds is where you can actually pick up all this equipment that I'm actually using, which is really cool. And then if you're a supporter of the channel, if you want to support, you can buy something from there and I'll actually get a little percentage of whatever's there. They'll still give you the best discount, the best prices. So definitely check it out. The link is below in the description of the video. 
All right, so that was FL Studio. So let's move on to another door and I'm gonna show you how to actually get those set up as well. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk. And what I wanna do is see if we can get this set up. All right, so let's get into the preferences. So I'm gonna click on P on the keyboard to get to the preferences. So what you wanna do is go to devices, there's many devices. And we wanna look for the one that says the Keylab DAW and we want the Keylab MIDI. So those are the ones that we want. So Keylab DAW and MIDI is what we want. So what the MIDI does is allows you to actually play the keyboard in the DAW and the DAW section allows you to use the transports and controls on there, right? So on the computer, I'm sorry, on the keyboard, what you, if you're in the DAW program, what you wanna do, what you wanna do is go to settings. So there's a button over here for settings. So we'll click on settings and you wanna to go to global, right? And you wanna scroll down to where it says DAW protocol. Once you click on that, you wanna to go to MCU, which is, is called like the Mac E control. So we'll click on that. So now the keyboard is ready to set up with Cakewalk. So now what you need to do inside of Cakewalk is go down here to where it says control services and it'll bring you to this screen. So I'm gonna add a new one. So click here to add new, right? And we're gonna change this from acted and we're gonna go to Mackie control. So this is the one we want, Mackie control, right? You see the key lab for MIDI, we're gonna change this one. We're gonna go to the DAW, right? And I'm gonna change this one to the DAW as well. So now we have the DAW set up, hit okay. And then hit apply. All right, you can close this out. So now we should have everything set up. I'm gonna go up here to utilities. And once you're in utilities, you're gonna go to Mackie control two, which I have set up, right? And you wanna make sure this disable handshake is checked and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna close this out. So now if, so now if I go and let's say I add an instrument. All right, and for some reason, um, I had to shut down Cakewalk and open it back up. And now all like the transport works. So if I hit play, it'll actually play, right? If I stop, it'll hit stop. If I hit record, it'll actually record, right? So now all of those are actually set up on here. So I just want to make sure we can actually hear some sounds. So we have two analog lab Vs on here, which is pretty cool. All right. So here I have the analog lab. And what's cool about this, if I go to programs, right? I can go to Atoria. So now it's gonna tell me exactly what I'm on. And you can see them on here. So if I wanted to change, I can change it. Right from here. Uh, I think that's really cool. And then you can change your parameters, like your uh, sound. So if I tap this, I can go up here and it will show me what I'm actually touching. So if I hit on the timber, you can see it lights up down there on the, the screen. Time, movement, distortion. So all I gotta do is tap it. And it'll tell me what I'm actually doing, right? So that's really cool. Um, the fact that you can control a tour, uh, the analog lab right here uh, from the keyboard, I think that's really dope. So. So let's do some chords. So we want to record that. All right, we can stop that. And as you can see, it is recorded inside of Cakewalk. Really cool. So uh, as you see, the strumming works, the control works. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work on here is like the tap tempo, like as you see, the tempo is not changing. The tempo is still staying the same on Cakewalk, but inside of Autoria, it'll tell me what the tempo I just tapped in. All right. So not all the transport stuff actually works, like the undo and redo, they don't work. Uh, the quantize doesn't work. Uh, the save doesn't work either. 
So none of these uh, actually work inside of the cakewalk option, but All right, and the loop doesn't work. This does work to move it around. The metronome is the loop. <laughs> so it's a little different, uh, I guess, for each doll, how it's actually set up with the Mackie controls. But you can use this keyboard inside a cakewalk, which is still really dope. So let's move on to another doll. All right, so here we are in Reaper and this theme is called Reaper Tips. So usually what you wanna do inside of Reaper is go to your preferences. All right, so in order to set it up in Reaper, I'm gonna to go to Control and P and that'll bring up my preferences. So once you're in preferences, you wanna scroll down toward the bottom and there's gonna be one that says Control. Click on Control, right? And we wanna do a Mackie Control, right? So I'm gonna remove this one on here. I'm just gonna add so once you hit on add, it will give you an option to choose what you want to add. And I'm going to go to Mackie Control Universal. Click on that. Then I want to go here to where it says MIDI input. And I want to go to the DAW. And I want to go here and go to the DAW. Hit OK. And then hit OK on here. And you should be able to use like your transport your stop, your record, right? Uh, you have your option for your uh, metronome here. So your metronome does work, right? And you have an option for loop. So if you take off your loop, if you add the loop, it'll put it back on there. And uh, your forward and back do work as well. So if I have this here, I can go back, right? It gives you an option to do the save. If you hit save, it'll give you an option to save. Uh, the only thing right now that I know it doesn't do is the tap tempo. So if I do a tap tempo. So on the keyboard, it shows the tap tempo, but the tap tempo up here is not working. I did try to see if I could find a way to uh, link them inside of Reaper, but I wasn't able to. I think that's a little bit disappointing for me, especially seeing that the keyboard has a setting in here that says Reaper. Uh, you would think that it would be able to do just a tap tempo, but Currently, it does not. Uh, maybe in a future update or if somebody make, creates a script for it, it'll probably work and you'll be able to use your tap tempo as well. But everything else pretty much uh, works in here. Um, the undo works, the redo, I don't think that works. Uh, what I did really like about the uh, complete control one is I can kind of scroll to each track. On this one, I haven't found a way to do that. Um, there's a button on here that says track but it doesn't go up or down. Um, it doesn't do the banks. So I'm not sure like where the miscommunication is for it, but you can still use like the chord mode. Right, so you have those options to still use your chords and scales and arps, even in uh, Reaper. I thought that was really dope. And another thing that it doesn't do inside of Reaper is the pads. Like you have to be on another setting in order for the pads to actually work. All right, so what I found out, the best setting for the Reaper one is to actually create a user. So I'll have my user one set up on this uh, keyboard right now. So this allows me to actually use the pads. Whereas if you just use the Reaper one, it's not gonna be able to use the pads. I'm not sure why they set it up that way, but I wasn't able to actually use the pads when I'm using the Reaper settings inside of uh, the keyboard. So I created my own user one and I'm actually using just the MCU inside here. So it's the same setup. You just have to use a different, you just have to create your own user in order to actually use this in Reaper the correct way. That's what I found out. Um, like I said, hopefully someone will come up with a script where it'll actually work a lot better and integrate a lot better with Reaper. Um, it's kind of interesting that they actually have it on the site and they have Reaper listed on like, you know, the list on here, but they don't actually have a script or anything set up for it to actually work and function correctly inside of Reaper. So there's that. All right, so let's move on to the next doll. All right, so here we are in Traction Waveform. And this one is uh, a little different from all the other ones that I actually use. So basically what you wanna do is go up to here to settings. All right, 
Uh, once you're in settings, you're going to go to MIDI devices. And once you're in MIDI devices, as you can see, it already put the inputs and outputs for the Keylab MK3. So if I go back to my project, I just need to make sure that the keyboard is set up on MIDI. So I'm going to go to my settings, go to global, and I'm going to change this right here where it says DAW protocol. Let's change it to MCU, right? So now you can see the transport actually works. I can record, right? Hit stop. Uh, does the tap tempo work? It does not. Tap tempo does not work. Your metronome can be turned on and off right here. And you have a loop back. So you could turn your looping on and off on here as well. And here we have, so in order to get it to work, we want to go down here to MIDI and go to the key lab 49 MK three MIDI. And we want to arm the track. So now you're able to actually use the keyboard as a regular keyboard inside of traction waveform as well. This is actually one of the easier DAWs to actually set up keyboards in. Um, not much to really do. You still have your chords in your scales and your arps already set up on here, which is really cool. So all in all, the keyboard is an actually really good keyboard. Um, you can use it for different DAWs. Like I said before, um, I believe the encoders actually work on here as well. So if I wanted to do right, so the encoders do work. So you can actually use this for your volume, right? And your panning left and right. So all those do work on here as well as it does in any of the other DAWs that I've actually showed. So the encoder does work on all the DAWs that I did uh, show. And that's a really cool part about actually having this uh, keyboard. Um, I would show Bitwig, but I don't have the latest version, so it will not load the MK3 uh, on there. So sorry, Bitwig, I don't, I don't have, I'm not updating. <laughs> but if you guys really want to Bitwig, definitely hit me up. You can actually work some things out uh, and get some Bitwig videos going on this channel as well. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. Let me know below in the comment section if you guys would actually pick up this keyboard. And this is the MK3 uh, Keylabs 49 by Atoria. I think it's a very solid keyboard. If you're interested in actually purchasing this keyboard or any keyboard or any kind of equipment, I have a link below in the description to my Zounds account so you can actually go through Zounds and actually pick up equipment and that'll actually help out the channel. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this one. And once again, it's your boy, X dot, E dot, L dot, O. Until next time, people. Peace.